modern versions, legends, current counterparts. Let's watch. They say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and that statement is no different in the world of wrestling. And that statement can certainly be applied to the squared circle, where so many modern day superstars remind us of legends of the industry. But who are the biggest examples of old school performers and their modern day counterparts being so alike? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. And where better to start today than with Drew McIntyre <laughs> and Bret Hart. Now, if you were watching WWF during the proto Attitude Era that was 1997, you might remember Bret Hart creating arguably his finest character when, after months of seeing the company get corrupted in his eyes by the likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin, he had something of a heel turn. Except it wasn't really a heel turn, because whenever he went to Canada, or anywhere else outside of the US for that matter, the hitman continued to be treated like the hero. Why was this? Well, it was all too easy to listen to what he was saying and feel that he was in the right. After all, fans had turned on more traditional babyfaces at this point in favor of anti-heroes, and WWF was becoming a vastly different place for it. So really, what this character represented then was a shift away from more stereotypical one-note wrestling villains into someone who instead had a solid logic behind everything he was saying. And that's exactly the same thing which could be said about Drew McIntyre today. Yes, when Drew told us all we shouldn't trust Jey Uso because only months before he'd been making life hell for every babyface on the roster on account of his placement in the bloodline, he was booed for it. And all the trash he's talked about CM Punk being easily injured and having a history of being <laughs> difficult to work with has a lot of truth in it too. Of course, you could argue that Drew has taken things a step further than Brett did back in 1997, as well the hitman was always very measured in choosing what he said and when he said it. The Scotsman has gone full hater mode in recent months. Hell, we still can't get over the I prayed for this and it happened line. Truly ice cold. But then that's just like the evolution of things, Diabolical. isn't it? You take something from the past and add your own flair to it. <laughs> and the Bret Hart heel, but not a heel gimmick from back then was such an excellent base to build on, which I is no know, doubt though. why Drew is one of the best things going in WWE today. But he's not the only good thing going right now. And on top of that, he's not the only current WWE character who seems to be inspired by a previous legend, as the exact same thing could be said about his upcoming WrestleMania opponent, Seth Rollins, and his inspiration, Macho Man Randy I don't Savage. Know about that one. After all, the pair are possibly the best in-ring wrestlers in the world during their respective eras, and both dress in flamboyant fashion, especially in Seth's more recent Drip God incarnation. And then there's the yeah. fact that while they're both brilliant, they're also the clear number two to an even bigger star who they have a close association with. Of course, in the Macho Man's case, this other bigger star would be Hulk Hogan, someone that Savage became so intertwined with over the years, it's hard to separate them in your mind. Oh and when it comes God. to the Monday Night Messiah, he <laughs> spent a long time as part of a stable with Roman Reigns. And as we all know, in recent years, Roman has fully established himself as the star player of WWE's current era. Really then, it's easy to see how you could consider Seth to be a modern day version of Randy Savage. Hell, he even has a famous female by his side. Though in his case, the woman he's married to, Becky Lynch, she's a lot more of an in-ring performer than Miss Elizabeth was. Basically, what we're saying here is that don't be surprised if we see Rollins becoming a Slim Jim spokesperson or appearing in a new Spider-Man movie at some point in the future, as LA that Knight appears to be it. the only things he's got left to do in order to fully morph into a modern day cream of the crop. But one of the other big baby face on Raw, no, the like one that has quickly stole the hearts of fans everywhere. Well, as it happens, he has a legendary comparison point of his own, as his in the father. case of Cody Rhodes, we could easily call him a modern day version of his father, Dusty. Obviously. And yes, we know this one might seem obvious, but really, it is true. <laughs> a lot truer than maybe thought of at first. After all, back during the 80s in Jim Crockett promotions, there was no bigger hero to wrestling fans out there than the American Dream. And the reason mm. for that was because he was the definition of the common man, someone who was truly blue collar in his nature and who stood directly opposed to the more big money theatrics of Ric Flair. Now sure, Cody isn't exactly a blue collar as he comes from wrestling royalty, but he has been able to appeal to the common man in much the same way his father did all those years before. And that's made him probably the best pure baby face going today. All he has to do is get on the mic and talk about how he's doing it for the people and they're fully behind him. And of course, it also helps that he has the perfect big money foil in Roman Reigns. Hell, he actually has two foils now, as ever since The Rock heated up his feud with the American Nightmare, that has, in many ways, become the more anticipated match of the two. But these aren't the only reasons Cody and Dusty are so similar, because if we go back to the 80s again, wow. it was the older Rhodes who was the one directly competing with Vince McMahon as the oh head booker goodness. of both Jim Crockett and WCW. Flash forward to the late 2010s then, and who was the one helping to create the first <laughs> real alternative WWE has seen in decades? 
You guessed it, Cody Rhodes. Yes, it was here that, after leaving the Fed behind and going out on his own in the Indies for a few years, he was able to play a hugely instrumental role in the formation of the spiritual successor to WCW, All Elite Wrestling. Honestly, this is a case of history mirroring itself so much that we're inclined to wonder if it isn't just some kind of glitch in the Matrix. Just please, no polka dots for Cody in the future, Triple H. Don't repeat that mistake. <laughs> no. But then maybe the game isn't the one we, we should be that. making that request too, as he's arguably outranked in the halls of TKO now by our next subject, someone who has a modern day counterpart of their yeah. own. That's right, it's time to talk about The Rock and L.A. Knight. Yeah, yes, it's been said over it's, and over yeah. again, but the Maryland native <laughs> really is what happens when you mix the gimmicks of Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock and put them into a modern day performer. It shows in everything from his promo style to his in-ring work to even the way he dresses. But while the rattlesnake is no doubt a favorite of Knight's, we'd argue it's the great one who's rubbed off on him even more as the comparisons between them only seem to grow by the day. Taking a terrible undercard gimmick and getting himself over with it to the point the company had to offer him something better? Yeah, that was something both The Rock and LA Knight did. Then there's the sunglasses, the cadence of speech, the liberal use of catchphrases. It all adds up to create an image of two people who are so alike they could be brothers at a glance. Honestly, it was a little jarring when on a recent episode of SmackDown, the People's Champion opened up the show with a rock concert. Then, only an hour or so later, his modern-day counterpart came out to cut a promo of his own and made us all wonder if we were seeing double. <laughs> sure, you could argue that this just makes Knight a cheap parody and nothing more, but fans are behind him regardless. Yeah, I'm And here if you for consider it. him in such a way, then you have to apply the same logic to the nature boy Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan as they each had their own respective counterparts in Buddy Rogers and superstar Billy Graham. The only question left then is will LA Knight ultimately rise to the same heights that Dwayne Johnson did by becoming a multiple time WWE champion? And if he's able to do that, will he then use his charisma to segue into the world of Hollywood? Anything's possible. So don't be surprised if in the future you see L.A. Knight featuring in the Fast and the Furious 17. Now, <laughs> maybe one day years from now, we'll even be talking about the former Max Dupree as a chairman of the board at TKO. Of course, by the time this happens, if it ever does, WWE will be a different place and the current crop of main eventers will have likely given way to a whole new cast. And somewhere near the top of the pile with that new cast will no doubt be Solo Sokoa. After all, he's taken so much inspiration from his uncle Umaga, how could he not reach such a... On LA Night, I don't know if it was done on purpose, but it's being executed so well. Like, it's not corny at all. Like, yeah, he kind of has a little bit of, like, The Rock's personality and Austin's personality, but it's like, it's, 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 it's good. Like, it's being executed. Or I don't think it's being done on purpose. I don't know. So that one is a that's a hard one. Like yeah, it's it, it is like he is his personality is kind of like both, but I don't I don't think he was doing that on purpose. I think it just happened. His personality is very contagious. His catchphrases are very like contagious. So I really like La Knight, and I noticed that like immediately. When I was like doing my reactions, I'm like, he kind of reminds me of those two, but it's like in a good way. It's not like, it's not like he's like stealing their personality or, you know what I mean? Like copying them. It doesn't, it doesn't come off like he's copying them. Like it just feels, it feels very natural and authentic. And that's what makes it so great. So point. What makes Umaga and Solo so similar? Well, aside from the fact that they're both members of the Anawaii family, there's also the fact that they both pretty much play the same role in the company, that of the silent assassin. Something Ooh, which has helped yeah. both men stand out, and in the case of Umaga particularly, reach the level of main eventer in short order, with his matches against John Cena being a particular highlight of the era. And then of course there's this feud with Bobby Lashley, the one which led to what many people consider to be the real main event of WrestleMania 23, the Battle of the Billionaires. And while Solo Sokoa has yet to reach such a level himself, at the rate he's going, he's well on track to do so. After all, despite only being on the main roster for about a year and a half, he's already proven himself to be a player in that he's regularly featured in main event segments and always comes across as dominating in the ring. Hell, even the tribal chief Roman Reigns has shown glimmers of fear towards him at points, with this all serving to push the idea that the Sacramento native is the real secret final boss of the bloodline. Yes, much like his uncle Umaga, much of Solo's appeal has come from the fact oh. that he doesn't talk much and instead lets his fists speak for him whenever the time comes. And boy, has he let them speak for him well because 
Um, again, like Umaga in the mid-2000s, his televised win-loss record is high on the win side. In fact, seeing him be pinned or submitted on TV is a very rare occurrence, even though he has unfortunately been on something of a losing streak recently on the house show circuit. Nonetheless, as time goes on, we expect Solo to go even further than his uncle by doing what he never could, win the WWE oh title. God. Is this something he'll take from his cousin Roman, or maybe from someone different like Cody Rhodes instead? That remains to be seen, but we expect it to happen eventually. And when it does, his role as the new enforcer of the company will be fully solidified, allowing Umaga to finally breathe easy, knowing someone has been able to fill his boots at last. Of course, he's not the only family member of a current day WWE superstar who's waiting to see his boots be filled by their kin, however, as the exact same thing could be said about Scott Steiner and his nephew, Braun Breaker. That's right, while he may be the son of Rick Steiner, we'd argue it's actually Scott who Braun has more in common with, at least in the ring, as like his uncle, he's an absolute wow, genetic I'm freak. Learning so much After in this all, video. let's not forget that before he morphed into his final form, Scott Steiner was one of the most athletic men in the business. Jesus. In fact, despite already being huge back then, he was easily able to pull off moves like Frankensteiner's on a regular basis. Oh and my while God. we've yet to see Braun use this particular move, we've seen him do things which are almost as impressive, and when he's not doing that, he's making great use of his raw power, another thing the Poet Laureate of Professional Wrestling was excellent at during his prime. Then there's the promos. Sure, the current SmackDown star is comprehensible on the mic, which makes him somewhat different to his uncle, but outside of that, the two are so similar it's eerie. That's right, if you just listened to audio of the pair, you'd swear it was the same voice. And with their bodies looking similar wow. too, you'd be forgiven for thinking you aren't just watching a mini version of Big Papa Pump whenever Braun hits the ring. <laughs> yes, even more so than Petey Williams and his run as Scott's understudy in TNA, it's Braun Breaker who's turning into the modern day version of one of wrestling's most truly unique figures. But let's move away from WWE for a while and instead head down to Jacksonville, as it's there that our next past and present counterparts reside. Who are we talking about here? Why, Taz and Samoa Joe, of course. That's right, back in the 90s, if there was one person in wrestling who you had to pick as a no-nonsense badass, someone who didn't have time for silly sports entertainment gimmicks and whose character was instead that he just beat people up in MMA-like fashion, <laughs> then that person was undoubtedly the human suplex machine. After all, who can forget his bouts in ECW, where he made absolute mincemeat out of the likes of Sabu, Rob Van Ooh. Dam, and Tommy Dreamer, just to name a few. Yes, whether it was a work or a shoot, no one wanted to mess with Taz back in the day. Oh and the exact God. same thing could be said in the current day for Samoa Joe, too, as if we were picking one person like on the land on their heads. roster who we legitimately didn't want to get into a fight with, it'd probably be him. Hell, that's why he's their current world champion. And it's also why, like with Taz, he first made his name in a smaller league, there absolutely dominating opponents with an MMA-inspired offense style. But that's still not the end of the comparisons between the two, because aside from their credentials as tough guys who don't mess around when it comes time to hit the ring, there's also the fact that their WWE runs mirrored each other quite closely. Let's not forget that after joining the roster, both found themselves struggling to adapt to the booking of Vince McMahon, as he wouldn't let them play to their strengths for the most part. And so when this didn't work out then, both ended up taking a spot at the commentary booth instead, all before piecing out and heading elsewhere once they got the chance. Oh, so and with Taz why. being a regular behind the commentary booth on Dynamite every week, we now get to see him witness his modern day counterpart up close and personal as he calls all of his bouts. Shit. Yes, when it comes to tough guy characters who don't play games in the ring, you'd be hard pressed to find two people more similar than the Red Hook native and the Samoan submission machine. And they're not the only past and present combo in current day AEW who deserve a spot in this video either, as we also have to make space to mention the acclaimed and the New Age Outlaws. I had no yes, we idea. know Road Dog isn't employed by AEW at That's the moment, but Billy Gunn most certainly is, and he's been put to excellent use over the last couple of years because following a brief spell as part of a trio with his children Austin and Colton, he's since moved on to become the third member of the acclaimed. Why is this such a great fit? Well, because Max Caster and Anthony Bowens are basically the closest thing we have to a modern day version of the New Age Outlaws in that, like with Road Dogg and Billy, they're made up of one great talker, someone known for wrapping the pair down to the ring every week, and another in-ring workhorse who can pick up the slack in that department. That's right, Max Caster what? and Brian James are basically like mirror images of each other at this point, as they can always be relied upon to pop a crowd with a great line. And oh, when it comes wow. to Anthony Bowens and the man known as Daddy Ass, they're both hugely underrated in terms of what they can do between the ropes. So maybe that's why the acclaimed have gotten so over in the last couple of years then. 
as they remind fans of how much fun the outlaws were at their peak. <laughs> Hell, they've even both got their rebellious spark to them, as well as a penchant for actually I'm funny toilet humor. These, these yes, guys you remember here. Suck It, and we've no doubt it was at least a partial inspiration for well, Scissor cool, Me, though. Daddy Ass. So really, we expect to see the Acclaim generate their own version of D-Generation X any day now, maybe by putting their current differences aside and merging with Bullet Club Gold full time. But even if they don't do this, there won't be a shortage of great mega factions in wrestling, because right now, Monday Nights has one of the best going, The Judgment Day, a group which took heavy inspiration from the Ministry of Darkness. Sure, they may not be quite as demonic as The Undertaker's former stable, at least not as they stand right now, but during the early days in particular, back when Edge was leading things, The Judgment Day certainly had more of a spooky vibe to them. And even as they've moved further away from this in the months and years since, they've maintained the gothic spirit, something which is evident to the fact that all of their members, namely Rhea Ripley, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, and Dominic Mysterio, are to varying degrees involved in that lifestyle. Sure, Dirty Dom might not be as dark as the others, but whatever his mommy that. wants him to do, we've no doubt he does. And the former Prince Devitt himself has certainly showed us his dark side through his Demon King character, but it's not just the gothic aspect which makes these two groups similar, as there's also the fact that, after combining their powers, they've both dominated Monday nights. Of course, for the Ministry of Darkness, this happened during the Attitude Era, when the stable made up of the Dead Man, the Acolytes, Midian, and Viscera took control of Raw, so much so that they even at one point enacted a hostile takeover attempt of the entire company. And while the Judgment Day hasn't quite gone this far as of 2024, they've also made the Red Brand their own personal playground as of late. Still not convinced of their similarities? Well, how about the addition of temporary members, something each group has been familiar with? Of course, in the case of the Ministry of Darkness, this happened when the Brood were briefly amongst the ranks. And with the Judgment Day, the same thing came with our truth and now semi-permanent member J.D. McDonough <laughs> being inducted. Then there's also the fact that both have been known to make alliances with other stables whenever it benefits them. After all, how can we forget the unholy corporate merger that was the Ministry's union with the corporation back in 1999? And while the Judgment Day's partnership with the Bloodline wasn't as long-lasting, they were certainly able to work together for a while, at least back in the autumn of 2023. But what about our next group of past and present counterparts on current day TV? Because heading over to SmackDown now, we find ourselves coming to someone who has a lot Trish. of similarities to an absolute legend of the women's division. Which two people are we talking about this time? Why, who else but Trish Stratus and Tiffany Stratton? Yes, as soon as Tiffany was signed up with WWE in 2021, it seemed the company saw comparisons between her and Trish Stratus right away. And why wouldn't they? Because the similarities are clear in that they're both great natural athletes with a very similar look who didn't have a lot of wrestling experience prior to joining the promotion. Hell, just like with Trish when she first got going in 2000, many people wrote off Tiffany initially as not being experienced enough, someone who certainly would never be able to hold her own in the ring against talents like Roxanne Perez, Lyra Valkyria, or Blair Davenport. But in the end, again, like Trish, she'd prove all her naysayers wrong by improving dramatically in short order to the point that come 2023, she'd be NXT Women's Champion. And with her now being full-time on SmackDown every week, we expect to see her go even higher, all the way to either the WWE Women's title or the Women's World Heavyweight title. Then, after that, who knows? Maybe she'll even build up a legacy for herself that will see her rival all other excellent things Trish did over the years. Sure, she might still have a ways to go, as in many people's eyes, Stratus remains the greatest WWE Women's Wrestler of all time. But the path she took mirrored her modern-day counterparts so much that we honestly wouldn't be surprised to see the similarities continue from here. Maybe we'll even see them square off in the ring one day and show us who the best truly is, but even if this never happens, we're sure they'll always be tied together by the inevitable comparisons, just the same way as everyone else we've looked at today will always be tethered to, wow. forever known as past and present versions of each other. I honestly have to say that I am surprised that there was no mention of Rhea and China, like, and... Dominic and Eddie, like those two definitely remind me of uh China and Eddie. Especially like Rhea, her whole like her personality, she's fit as hell. You know, China was fit and a great wrestler, but I love to say out of all the comparisons, Solo and Omaga were Umaga were my favorite. Um comparisons out of the entire video this, vi this video taught me a lot of things 
that I did not know. So this is very informative. But that's gonna do it for this reaction, you guys. Make sure you leave some likes and comments down below. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see y'all in the next one. Toodles.